So um, we still have some material to cover in chapter eight. Yeah, okay. Are you, are you up to it? <laughs> yeah, well, let, let's go through it. And sure. See. Um, mm. All right, okay. So um, last uh, week, we went to the simple exponential smoothing. Um, and uh, um, even we had a little uh, mention about uh, how to modify uh, the model when uh, it's a trend um, uh, situation uh, in particular. Uh, so, um, uh, for example, we can see um, that the um, um, original equation for simple exponential smoothing, which is this one here, is now filled with a, uh, a second part uh, which contains uh, this uh, B uh, sub T uh, element, uh, which is the trend equation. So now um, it's a bit like um, more uh, specific on, the, on the, the trend and we can specify this with a, a new parameter uh, since before we had just alpha, uh, this this first part here. While well, now, uh, okay, let's say this part here. While well, well, now we have this uh, addition in the level equation and uh, uh, an entirely new equation for for the trend, which is there is a beta that now varies within uh, the two levels uh, at different time. Uh, and so this is a uh, main, uh, the, 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 so the, the difference basically. Uh, both uh, alpha and beta are constrained within zero and one. And uh, what else? So that there is some, um, um, use of uh, Australia uh, economy uh, taken from the global economy data set. So selected the Australia and then uh, transform the population um, uh, uh, on a uh, thousand for, uh, on a 10,000 for, on a hundred thousand. Oh, um, okay. So, <laughs> um, so the proportion. I think that one is a is a, is a million. It's a million. <laughs> ah, okay. It's a yeah, six six yeah. zeros, six yeah. zeros. <laughs> uh, and so with the auto plot uh, function, we can immediately see uh, there is a trend. Okay, so a clear trend, growing trend, uh, and so we can uh, um, assign the model uh, the is um, exponential smoothing. Uh, as we did the last last week uh, to this time, so we're using um, this data set, so it's a little different, but so we use the population on error, again, trend and season. And if I've already mentioned this. Uh, so this time, uh, if you want to uh, basically have a look at the model with the trend elements, uh, uh, parameters. So you uh, modify this. This was to known n. Uh, so basically, uh, positioning in the model, but not use it. While now we uh, uh, use this a, which means addition. So the additive uh, part of the trend. So we add the trend. And uh, we can see that we have uh, the best beta hat, uh, sorry, alpha hat, which is about uh, 0 0.99, so about one, so very high. Uh, and this shows that the level changes rapidly. Um, and then we can estimate it, the smoothing coefficients for the slope, because now, uh, this um, new parameter, this beta, uh, this is, uh, is now being estimated 
from the model uh, has to be the, the closest uh, one to the observed data. And um, so it's 0 0.33 about, about this value. And this is, uh, um, this is the slope. So basically it's capturing uh, the trend of the, of the data, of the time series. So as, as, the, as we see last time, so last week we went to how to build up this um, uh, little table. So now we know um, uh, how it's made. Uh, and um, here are the results. So the, basically the um, forecast result. Uh, that we had, uh, and this time we specified H to be 10. So we went through 10 periods forward. And so we can see that there is a, a steady increase uh, within the, the um, estimations. So the very next one is about 24.97. And uh, within 10 years, it will, uh, they will, so it's estimated that in 2027, that we we'll reach 28.29. Uh, what else? So now you, uh, uh, there is some, some specification about what is this method that this is called the Halter linear method. And um, you can find some uh, um, more specific resources here. Uh, and um, it's exactly basically a replication of this method. And as I said, the values of the parameters are constrained between zero and one. So you value outside this range is not, um, not included and uh, are not valid. So this P is the, it means the, uh, the estimation basically. It's really, this, uh, this is less than 0.8. Um, and it says that um, as a, in this case, as a very, that there is a very strong effect. Um, and uh, okay, so now we can, another example that, uh, to, to see how this uh, uh, forecast can be uh, basically can, can change if you use different methods. There is this dump holes method or the classical holes method. So the linear or the dump. Um, and we can see that uh, for, for the linear holes method, uh, we do just exactly as we did it uh, on the previous equation, on the previous uh, model function. While now for the dumped OS um, method, uh, we specify a new parameter, which is P. Okay, so going back to uh, here, this method also includes a dumping parameter. And um, this uh, um, uh, basically uh, helps to identify what are the, uh, um, so using its words, dampens the trend so that it approaches a constant sometime in the future. Uh, and so um, basically this P is really uh, less than 0.8 and it has a very strong effect for small, small values. Basically it goes to um, on the, um, on modifying uh, the, the trend using this um, parameter. Uh, to identify the small, very little small changes. 
And uh, one more is uh, we usually restrict this P to a minimum of 0.8 and a maximum of 0.98. So um, also we have, we don't have A, just A, but we have this AD. Uh, and uh, then we repeat the things, and this time we, we reach 15 years after the, the last observation. And we can see that the dumped uh, host method is uh, grabbing a sort of uh, um, inclination within the towards the um, um, a more Mm, uh, steady level so it's like um, going towards a um, more stable um, level of the population over o with over 15 years so he forecasts that uh, there is not the same um, uh, steady increase but it, it for us is a, a, um, a stabilization uh, in the long term uh, about the value that we reach the population in Australia, the, yeah, the amount of the, the population in Australia. Uh, jo yeah. Just, just, just a, a, a small comment here. Uh, that's very useful, especially for demographics, uh, 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 you know, measures, because we know that usually the population, even though it grows steadily, the pace of growth could vary, okay? It's not going to be constant. So uh, there was an article about, I think it was about uh, two weeks ago, that apparently uh, China, which is the most populous nation so far, their population is going to stabilize, okay? In other words, it is not going to grow as in the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. So this dampen, that damp uh, coefficient of fee, what it does is that it kind of introduces, uh, uh, you know, a, a gradual, a gradual uh, uh, trend to mimic what is uh, happening in reality. Mm -hmm. So for example, if China uh, population is not growing at the same pace as 10 years, then that fee will like, would you know be an adjustment for you know the next five or ten years. So instead of a straight line, what you're going to do is try to curve it to reach a maximum and then stabilize or decrease. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 kind of uh, adjusting the model to fit more of the reality of what we see in the real world. Mm -mm -mm. Exactly. So uh, okay. Let's go forward and see uh, another example uh, with uh, internet usage. And uh, here we have um, uh, like um, this, this data set. Um, so we might want to um, jump into R to see, but anyway, so we just have a, have a look at this, uh, this sample for the minute. Um, and see that this is the internet usage per minute. So we have the, the minutes and the number of users. So you see that within, um, if, if they start using more like more than an hour uh, of internet, the, so this is the largest part and it's uh, so quite, so the majority of the, the user in this data set uh, uses uh, internet for more than an hour and a half. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, we modify the table the, to, uh, to start at 10 and uh, uh, apply the model. Okay, here we apply three models. Okay, one is the basic, the simple one. The, the first one, simple exponential Moody. The second is with the linear hole. And the other one is the, uh, without, we, haven't, we don't specify 
the P in this, uh, in this one here. And we just like to see what's happened in the next period, just the very next one. And so results here, um, as you can see, um, the dumped holes method is best, whether you compare uh, the MA uh, or the RMC values. So the RMC values, for example, you can see that the dumped is, uh, so it, they, they, it's sorted automatically on the best one. So you can see that this is, this is lowest, the lowest value. So, and then um, as well for the MAE. Uh, mean absolute error and uh, so on. So um, now we can see the parameters. And to see the parameters, we use the tidy function on the on the fit model, and we see that the alpha is has been chosen as a, uh, the best alpha uh, possible alpha for for these observations. It's one, so ma maximum level. Uh, beta is uh, very close to the, its maximum level, and um, the phi uh, it's uh, no point eight. So these are other two, uh, so starting level zero and beta zero, so the minimum values. Uh, well, that, so we, we plot this and see that the uh, after um, two hours, uh, they, uh, the, the population of users start decreasing but it varies so it can be yeah most probably uh they 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 are less than than uh, what they were uh within the one hour and a half or something but uh it's not said so this this um shadows like makes me make me a bit of like <laughs> everything is possible basically okay uh so what that so this this is um so we have seen the trend we now go uh to the uh here that there is always a nice uh uh explanation by the orders so the 15 minutes um um very so short and focalized on the on the section for about 15 minutes on, on youtube by, by the author so very uh, useful and uh, so now uh, we have uh, this all the winters additive methods we are now talking about uh, seasonality okay and um, so the, as we mentioned in the last week, the difference between the trend and seasonality. So now we focus on uh, um, more specific sec section of the, the time series, which is can be quarterly data, like e M equal to four, or monthly data, M equal to uh, 12. Uh, we still have a level, an alpha and a beta, and now and we have a gamma. Okay, and obviously a seasonal components. Uh, let, let's let's go a bit uh, so uh, otherwise we don't we <laughs> won't be able to finish. Um, but um, it's it's interesting to see that uh, if we focus on the very beginning of our um, simple exponential moving, we now adding. Uh, this B sub T, and we add again the seasonality within a specific specified um, uh, section of the time series in terms of times. Okay, we have a level uh, where is, there is alpha uh, and the beta, which at, um, I think. Um, 
to to identify the trend of the seasonality and the, the seasonal uh, uh, component. The seasonal component. So the seasonal component is now um, with gamma. So we have alpha, beta, and now we have gamma. Gamma, it's basically uh, use it to as a proportion for to make a proportion of the uh, observed values. So let's uh, go back to what we know. So when this is the level and we, uh, I mentioned that even here in the level, there is a seasonal component. So from our observations, we extrapolate a seasonal component and how specifying if it's a quarter of monthly um, seasonal. And in the uh, seasonal component in itself, uh, it's um, basically extracted, uh, it takes, a, uh, it's a sort of a weight, okay, this gamma, that you use it to extrapolate the, those little areas, those, those little parts of the, uh, time series that are uh, belonging to a season more than another. So, uh, and so we wait with this uh, alpha, uh, sorry, with this gamma and one minus gamma, as we did it with alpha and beta, the seasonal component. So we have the entire time series minus each piece of the season that we, we take off and we go back. So uh, obviously now we need to restructure the um, le length of time on which we forecast, uh, which is not an entire period, but is a section of the period. And this section is, uh, this is just uh, uh, algebra. Um, mathematical formulation to to say that this is uh, um, uh, difference of the so so basically fra um, divided within m and this m is the uh, if it's the quarter or if it's the number of months uh, as specified. So this is what we are going to estimate, this value, uh, this, this new parameter gamma. And um, um, what is worth to mention is that again, gamma, new, the estimated gamma will be constrained within zero and one but at the same time, it would be between zero and one minus alpha. Okay, so this is the additive method, while the multiplicative method is slightly different because it basically uh, increased the chance of happenings instead of uh, um, more than increase, when you multiply in uh, probability calculus, you consider more than one alternative. While when you add in things, when you add in section of um, trends, in this case for probability, you um, have an overall um, value of the probability. So, um, why when you multiply, it's one that happened or the other. So you consider both, but just one of the two can happen, basically. So they multiply all the period, but then they choose one. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, so additive- um, uh, Federica, yeah. I found a, a chart 
on how to identify when your trend or your seasonality, you should use additive or multiplicative. Okay. Right. okay. Uh, let me show you because it's in my screen. Okay. I stop sharing. Yeah. Let me share it real quick because this is something that usually, uh, you know, is kind of confusing. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. My screen. Okay. So, uh, when we talk about additive, okay, is that the progression of the trend or the frequency of the seasonality is constant, okay? So you can add the, you know, the, the, the trend pattern or the seasonal pattern, a pattern in a constant, you know, with a constant formula. What happens with the multiplicative, okay, especially in the trend, is that instead of going through a line, it, it, it has like an exponential component, okay? So instead of an arithmetic, uh, you know, uh, a progression, you have a geometric progression, okay? And that's what is called multiplicative because during the patterns of time, the periods of time, the change is going to be a little bit bigger, okay? Instead of a constant, of, 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 you know, of, of a constant uh, pace. In the seasonality, what happens is that the seasonalities in the multiplicative get bigger, uh -oh. okay? And it's associated also with the variance uh -oh. uh, component. You know, when the variance gets bigger and it's a seasonal pattern, then we, we say that the seasonality, uh, you know, uh, form of, uh, of uh, increasing is multiplicative. In other words, geometric also. Okay. So uh, let me let me share. I'm going to share this uh, link uh, in the chat so we can have that reference because this uh, link explains in a very concise manner. It explains all all those methods that you're explaining in the book. It explains us in a very concise manner and with graphs, of course. Okay. So let me get the chat here, okay? This is going to be the, the link, okay? But again, additive is that we have a constant uh, pace of, of, of the changes of trend and the changes in seasonality. When we talk about multiplicative, is that the trend is kind of exponential. In other words, it's growing at a geometric uh, way uh, through time. And in the seasonality, the seasonality is getting larger by time. In other words, it's not constant. And that's what the multiplicative methods tend to, you know, tend, tend, tend to be applied to when it's not, when those patterns are not constant throughout time. If they are constant, then we can use the additive. All right. Okay. So basically, that's what the difference between the additive, multiplicative. Okay. Okay. Uh, you're in mute. Okay. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, so now we can see the application of these two models, uh, type additive and multiplicative. Uh, so we have this. Uh, time using uh, the tourist data uh, again in Australia. Uh, and uh, so we have the number of trips, okay? Uh, the additive is additive everywhere. So we can consider error, trends, and season as an additive, so full additive. And now in the multiplicative, uh, we don't consider trend as a multiplicative. And uh, while the season and the error are, 
So we forecast within the next, uh, for, for the next uh, three years. And we see that the results are, so we can, in, in this case, apply both of the methods. And we can see that there is a, a, a little difference, very little difference within the two. And this is why because, you know, so the alpha selected is 0.26, the beta is 0.16, gamma is very little, and the RMC is 0.4. So here you can see there is a clear seasonality, okay, within months. And uh, we haven't had any other uh, parameter, I think we do it later. But uh, we can see that this, uh, this little difference, uh, that, so in this case, there is not much difference if you want to use an additive or multiplicative uh, type of model. You can use both of them. This, in this case. And if you think about the tourism and the number of sticks, okay. So uh, if, if you check the uh, RMSE yeah. uh, for both models, you'll see that the multiplicative, multiplicative in this case has a lower RMSE, okay. Yeah, that one than the additive. Yeah, but it's so very little. If you, you, if, if you are going to select yeah. uh, one of them based mm -hmm. on the RMSE, uh, you will select the multiplicative in this case. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay, because it has a less, you know, mm -hmm. a standard error. But if you think about what what uh, what we are analyzing, so we are analyzing the number of trips, okay, for example. So what's happening if I, I, I want to have a look at this uh, trend and think what the number of trips can be within one year, so within two years, if they are going up or not. I know that the trend is this, so I'm quite uh, certain that it will repeat itself, okay? So because it did it within a uh, um, certain period of time, so, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, it's going to to repeat itself, but if you want to be uh, specific on the on the, this little difference, you think that the number of trips can be additive or multiplicative. So yeah, mm, both of them yeah. for me. Can be uh, apparently, what is happening here is that the trend is additive. In other words, there's a constant pace of the trend. But the seasonality is growing a little bit, you know, you know, by by, by the time. Mm -hmm. So that little growth is what it gives the multiplicative a better chance of capturing that, of capturing that seasonality change than the additive, because the additive is going to be constant you know, mm -hmm. throughout the time series. The seasonality, no change, seasonality. If there's a change because of time, then the multiplicative will, will catch that. Okay. And that's what you know the difference between the 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 models there. Okay. But but it's a small difference. It's not that you know that, that big. Okay. <laughs> I agree. If we use the dumped method, so now we have uh, uh, this extra um, parameter that we specify, and we. Go specific onto another data set, which is the pedestrian data set. We select a date and a sensor uh, in the Southern Cross station, and we index the day by date and summarize. So we have the count uh, of the um, catch. 
I think so. Um, so we filter. Um, okay, so this is um, uh, we we filter a particular date, which is less than the, this value. So we basically focus on uh, data data from uh, July to August, July the first and August fifteen. And we apply AD, so the dump it uh, method. And um, so both of them are multiplicative in this case. And uh, forecasted within two weeks after the last observation available so that we set uh, and so we can see that the result is like um, so let, let's go back uh, so we feel today to be less than uh, July 31st okay so that, that filter, what it does is that that's going to be your training, your training set for the model, okay? Uh -huh. All the observations before uh, July 31st, 2016 and backward, that's going to be your training model. And then after that, until two weeks, right, which is the period of the forecast, two, two weeks, that's going to be your test, mm -hmm. your testing. So you're training on that, you know, values before the July 31st, Train the model and see if that model can fit the next uh, two weeks that we have a test data for measuring, you know, me measuring the validity of them, of that, uh, of that uh, model. And so we can see that the uh, let, let's take this bluish uh, uh, line, solid line, which is uh, uh, let's say the 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 most uh, the average est estimation of what it uh, the model has uh, released basically uh, and um, uh, they, they it's it's slightly go going down uh, to uh, as a difference within the previous uh, uh, season. So from from basically from the first August the first, it's forecasted to be little uh, lower, and then 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 uh, previous terms. But it's not that. <laughs> but it's not okay. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you want to um, add something or uh, take the the if you want to go forward from here maybe or something. Um, here we talk about the uh, a bit more specific explanation of what's happening when you apply a model. Okay, so we have. Uh, um, Simple, additive, and multiplicative, uh, and the dump it. So you can see the the um, uh, what you have what you use inside the model function basically. Um, That's the way. Uh, if you can go back to the table, okay. Uh, this uh, this 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 is the ETS right? Error, trend, and seasonality using exponential smoothing, of course. Mm -hmm. And these are the various combinations that you can do within the error, uh, you know, parameter, the trend parameter, and the seasonality parameter. Okay, so when we started uh, talking about simple exponential smoothing, we did it without considering any trend or any seasonality, right? So those were n. Okay, we we we're using the same method but discarding the trend, no trend equal to N, and also discarding the seasonality, 
just focusing on the smoothing parameter, which is the error, all right? Mm -hmm. Then you can do uh, additive to each of them. You can do multiplicative to each of them or a combination as we saw in the previous chapter that we saw a combination of multiplicative for error, trend additive, and then seasonality multiplicative, or there could be you know, different kinds of combinations. All right, mm -hmm. so the model is very flexible in terms of capturing uh, the trend, the seasonality, and different parameters that you can adjust to capture the most of it, all right? Okay, so we can go forward and see there's some, some innovations uh, um, and what let, let's um, so see that I'm not sure about this um, this thing would you like to add something about these things saying um, this is uh, specific about yeah, this talks about the assumptions for the errors. Okay, so uh, for example, like in like in regression, like in uh, you know ordinary linear regression, uh, we know that the residuals, in order to have a valid model, they have to be the residuals have to be in independent distributed, you know, Gaussian distributed. Uh, they should have constant variance, etc. So we are applying the same concept here in terms of the innovation uh, residuals, in terms of the errors. And the errors, because this is a regression model, okay? It's, it's, it's really a regression model. The only thing that we have the weights, right? The weights of alpha, you know, for the errors, the, the, the beta for the trend, the gamma for seasonality, those are weights, really. So what happens is that those residuals from these models, they have to also uh, comply with those assumptions, okay? So one of the assumptions is that they should be independently uh, distributed, okay? That they, that they should be random distributed. If we have something that creates a pattern or creates a lag, for example, in the residuals, then the model is not capturing all the information that it should be, all right? So this is more like a post you know, post uh, evaluation test using the residuals of, as we do in ordinary linear regression. Yeah. That's basically the summary, you know, here. Yeah. And that's why you see that uh, epsilon, which is the error, you know, that the epsilon uh, sub T, NID, normally independent distributed, okay, with mean zero and, you know, constant variance, mm -hmm. okay? Which is basically similar to what we have in ordinary linear regression. Yeah. So basically, the, this is uh, these are these are the um, observed values, okay, where we consider to have some residuals uh, within. Uh, so we then now when we apply the model, we uh, estimate the, the parameters, and so. This is the starting point of those are um, um, the observed, these, these are the observed values, uh, and they are expected to be composed of these uh, parameters, included uh, the residuals. Okay, then we estimate when we apply the model, we estimate these values so they then hat they have a an hat okay so th this is a basically a um, mathematical uh, formulation for for you to uh, basically understand the location um, so where where uh, how the residual act uh, within your observed data and they are expected to be um, in proportion of, of the other parameter and so the, this is a mathematical notation uh, for the, the assuming everything. Mm, okay, so now uh, there is a, um, a bit of discussion about the estimation of the models, 
the likelihood and so the probability of the, the, the data uh, when you select a model more than, than another. And obviously, as you said, we assume that the residual are normally distributed and so on. So let, let's say that we know, let, let's give it for less, that we are, um, we know that what is um, the, the basis of uh, a model, basically. So uh, again, um, here there's a, a bit more specification of the uh, various parameters and um, there, there might be uh, extra admissible regions for alpha, not to be just constrained within zero and one, but uh, with different values. Because they, in order to prevent observation, uh, the, the, um, so that they, uh, be, they are in the past, and so they can uh, basically, uh, uh, again, affect uh, or affect uh, the forecasts. Um, so the, the, there are some admissibilities uh, of the parameters uh, that might my, my change. And this is not, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about that. But then when uh, we finally, so we, we have, let's say that we now, we made some models and we now want to evaluate the model and we use this um, information criterion, uh, which we know from the I, uh, SLR uh, and so the uh, theoretical statistics, what uh, is used to identify this, uh, the result of this criterion, which is very useful because uh, it uses the likelihood of the model and uh, also another parameter, which is K, and uh, uh, which is the total number of parameters that we speci specify. And it helps to understand if we are within a certain um, range uh, of. Uh, uh, credibility for the model, basically. Okay, and the other one is the Bayesian information criterion, which it's an adjustment of the uh, uh, AIC uh, criterion. Um, uh, it's basically uh, again, using um, so already the the information criterion is using the is using the likelihood, uh, while the Bayesian information is an adjustment of this uh, criterion. So I'm not uh, going to that uh, very much, and uh, here is there is an example. And I think we have a little time left. So if we have a look at the tourism uh, data set, uh, we now look at the holidays. And again, summarize the number of trips and we apply a simple um, uh, exponential smoothing and we have a look at the result of the fit. So we have an alpha 0.34 and a gamma very low okay and uh, what's happened here uh, is the... uh, Federica jo just yeah. a comment when you don't uh apply or assign the parameters in your formula remember the error yeah. the trend uh -huh. the season mm -hmm. what the model does that ETS model what it does is that it tries different models different combinations and then using the you know those parameters the AIC especially I think I think is the, the the one that is using the AIC which 
you know, it's the, it, it's a minim, it's a minimization, it's the minimum ARC that you're looking. It gives you the most, uh, you know, uh, uh, the 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 optimal per, uh, parameter set of parameters for that AIC. So, for example, the model that the the formula you know established as as the best was ETS error multiplicative, no trend, and seasonality additive. Okay, mm -hmm. you see it right there in the parentheses. The M and A. Yeah, yeah. M for error, M for N for trend, mm -hmm. and A for seasonality. Ah, exactly. So that's yeah. the model that is optimum for these parameters for the AC. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you will see that in the next chapter when we talk about ARIMA. In ARIMA, it's basically that is how to minimize from the all the possible ARIMA models, which is the minimum AIC that we can get. And so this is our starting point, so our, our observations uh, uh, it's uh, supposedly to be made of these uh, uh, values that we are going to estimate. Uh, and uh, so the level and the seasonal components, which contains the parameters, alpha and gamma. And so our model releases the estimation of alpha and gamma. And the output uh, returns an estimate for the uh, so the levels, and uh, we can see that uh, the components with this function components uh, that we know, but uh, to 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 say it again, uh, we have. Uh, this is the observed values. This is the level, the season, and the residuals, basically. So we see this. Uh, and uh, there is, um, you can see, because of the residuals, uh, you can see that there is a multiplicative error trend. So, innovation residuals are not equivalent to the regular residuals. Okay. So you can see it. You can see the difference in the in in the scale in the chart. Mm -mm. Okay, the innovation yeah. residuals are between minus 0.1 and 0.1, while the regular, which is just the yt minus the y hat, okay, the, the, the fitted value is, is between minus one to one. So yeah, they, 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 are, they, 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 they are adjusted for the multiplicative. Mm -mm. Okay, so the last bit is uh, uh, the forecasting. A little bit more specification of what's happened um, within uh, the results of the model. And uh, we can see that now we have an estimation with our hat within, uh, like, let's say, two plus uh, period of time. And uh, um, it basically contains the, the information based on what we provide. Uh, and uh, for example, if we use this uh, tourism data uh, in Australia and we forecast it for, for the next um, eight uh, periods, you can see that the value, okay, it, it's obviously expected to repeat itself because it's very seasonal. So we can see that it's going to repeat itself. And um, so we have the, the estimation. So the prediction of the uh, intervals. And um, in order to identify those things, we have, uh, obviously, our estimation includes um, a prediction interval. OK, so this is the 
estimation and then is shifted or uh, um, and um, so I don't think uh, this this is um, so we basically use the forecast function and uh, here are all the mathematical notations what's happen when you apply a model with additive no uh, and only additive or uh, error additive or error additive trend additive or you know dumped and so on and so forth so you have uh, a little uh, uh, idea of what uh, how the uh, variability uh, it's calculated considering the various parameters yeah okay so i think we finish uh, chapter eight there's just 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 one one item missing and is that you know we always do the practice exercise right yeah so now we have all that theory that we have you know ingested in our system now it's time to apply for so for the next session we will start applying the theory to the exercise 8.5 8.5 okay which also uh deals with the global economy it deals with the exports and you can choose you know a country as a matter of fact when i did the exercise i chose uh italy <laughs> okay so we can we can be in the same you know in the same uh, uh frequency all right so uh ex excellent excellent uh, Federica. thank you thank you uh, so yeah let, let's start with that exercise and then if we finish you know before then we can start talking a little bit about the arima the yeah, yeah. language yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which uh, arima is one of the foundations you know in, in in forecasting traditional you know forecasting okay all right you. so have a, have a great weekend and i'll see you next friday thank okay. you okay take care ciao <laughs>